it's it's truly a cleanup bill, but it's a it's a big cleanup bill. <laughs> okay. Well. Well, your uncle says it's a good bill, so it must be pretty good. <clears throat> of course, now, that doesn't count a whole lot up here, but um, so thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Kirkpatrick is next. And she has Senate Bill 80. Now, I, I want to tell you folks uh, that there were some issues with Senate Bill 80 as it first came across. And the senator met with all the parties involved this past Thursday afternoon, I think. Uh, and my little conference room spent several hours in there and they got it all worked out and both sides are happy. Plus they agreed to uh, continue discussion over the summer on, on some issues. So with that said, go ahead and present your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senate Bill 80 relates to prior authorization, which is a process that patients and providers have to go through to get approval for procedures. And we have been able to reach an agreement that adds transparency to the process and establishes some rules of the game. And although um, the word happy might be a little bit of a stretch, I think we've reached an agreement and we have committed to continue to work on the issues that are still remaining over the summer. Very good. Well, I don't see any questions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Senator Watson here. Senator Watson's not here, huh? Okay. Senator Strickland here. Well, who is here from back there? Oh, I'll, t I'll, I'll t entertain Sen Senator Huffstetler. <coughs> Oh, okay, well, Senator, you got Senate Bill 201. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, that's a uh, departmental bill for the Department of Revenue that would uh, let them use informatics, the same data, data analytics that our Department of Human Services uses to collect delinquent uh, money owed. It's, it's already been gone through the court system. They've exhausted their appeals. They owe the money. And rather than send it out, you know, sort of a shotgun approach to 30 different banks, this would send it out to the single bank that knows where the assets are. And um, that's the bill. It was uh, the banking and uh, credit unions had some issues with it after we passed it out. Uh, Chairman Blackman and I sat down with them, addressed all the issues to their satisfaction. Okay. Very good. Well, I don't see any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, is Senator Summers here? Yes, sir. I don't know you. Well, I look forward to getting to know you, sir. Where are you from? Uh, South Georgia, District 13. Starts at Dooley County, got nine counties, about 400 miles around my district. Massive. <laughs> yes, sir. I really feel a feel for you there. Yes, sir. Uh, I sort of feel the same way. Well, we got some good people in South Georgia. Now. I, I, I agree with that. Okay, you got Senate Bill 222. Uh, yes, sir. Very, very simple a bill that means a, a, a great deal to an incredible industry down there. We're trying to uh, name the, uh, make Pecan become the uh, official state net of Georgia. Now, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to take a vote on this. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but I would bet that if we put state senate in there where you got pecan your bill would go down fast there's several people's <laughs> names i'm sure you could add to that list yes sir okay i, I don't have any doubt about that sir <laughs> all right okay you're a braver man than me to come up with this you know. <laughs> okay well thank you sir i don't see any questions thank you kindly sir have a great day you too <clears throat> senator harper Senator Harper here. He's not here? Who, who is anybody out there? <clears throat> is Senator Kennedy? Uh, 
Senator, wh wh where are all the other senators? There's about three that don't want their bills heard. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I don't know. I, I was out there uh, listening to the names. I don't know where they are, but I'll be glad to try to round them up and, and uh, give any uh, message or get, or get uh, them over here, whatever you want me to do, Mr. Well, Chairman. Uh, un until they come ask for their bill, it's going to stay on this little blue sheet and we'll never make it to the House floor if you'd remind them of that. I'll be glad to do that. Mr. Well, I Chair. appreciate it. And, and he has been a tremendous asset uh, to Columbus as far as Mercer Med School is concerned. And I want to thank you for that. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that, your kind words, and uh, have certainly enjoyed working with you and your initiative and leadership on what's going over there in Columbus is uh, uh, in inspiring and is going to pay uh, dividends a long time. Too far? Too far? Sorry. I actually meant that, folks. Now, I did. Now, you know, if I didn't believe him 100%, I would take his bill off the calendar. <laughs> but go, go ahead, uh, Senator Kennedy. All 234. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Present to you Senate Bill 234. Um, this is a bill that really is just the Uniform Mediation Act uh, that springs from uh, the Uniform Mediation Act. It's got a little tweak that addressed some concerns that constituent or that some uh, stakeholders had last year to make sure that those that utilize the mediation process maintain confidentiality through that. Uh, it really does three things uh, why we need the legislation. Number one is for legal consistency and clarity also to promote consumer protection through disclosures and it also will enhance and maintain Georgia's leadership in the area. There is, although it sounds like and is a bar and a lawyer's bill, the truth is there's also an uh, economic development aspect for certain lawyers that practice in the area of international mediation. They say that Georgia's missing opportunities to have mediations held in the state of Georgia because our sister states around us have this construct for mediation in the law that we don't have and that uh, certain people involved in international mediations are going to other states instead of Georgia. So be happy to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I, I, I'm only, I don't see any questions. I've got one. Um, oh, I do see one. Whip Kelly. No, Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to one of the leadership in the, in the Senate, this refers back to the previous bill, if I may. Yes, sir. Am I to understand that Senate Bill 222 is um, a Senate priority to name the pecan as the um, official <laughs> state nut. Mr. Leader, I'm, I'm not sure I'd characterize it as a priority. It, it, it might be for one of the senators over there. Um, but uh, we, we thought it important enough to pass it out. Would, would hope that bill would be well received. But uh, I, I probably won't attach any more importance to it than that. Uh, I thought it was. I just wanted to make sure it was, I understood it was a Senate priority. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to ask you my question then now. Um, oh, yeah. Did, did, have you read Senator, I mean, uh, uh, the AJC's article by uh, the, uh, reporter Torbett? No, sir. I have not. Um, okay. It, I think it was a few days ago. It'd be interesting reading. Okay. It, um, Sp spoke very highly of the House, but it was not very complimentary of the Senate. Oh, my. <laughs> I know okay. I, I'll have to read that, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it's, it's, it's fun to read. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, Senator. Yes, sir. Thank have you. Have a good day. Y'all too. Thank you very much. All right. We're, we're finished with the Senators. Okay, Mr. Harper. Good morning, Mr. SR84. Chairman. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm running a little late this morning. Uh, SR84 is a study committee that would, a joint study committee, House Senate study committee that would uh, look at funding of airports in our state um, and make sure that uh, we get, uh, we establish a proper way to fund our airports and the infrastructure that they provide and um, ensuring that they're that infrastructure and that investment continues to be a, a priority of, of this General Assembly, and that's what 
That's what SR 84 does, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> Where is he? Okay. Chairman Knight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to um, uh, thank the Senator for bringing this. I think this is uh, very important to the state and uh, many of us all have airports uh, in our either our communities or our districts and they serve a very important function to this state and the infrastructure of this state and uh, I applaud the Senator for for bringing this. I think it's time to review it. Um, I think in the past I've seen that Georgia is way behind our other southeastern states and the support of our airports. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Representative Knight. All right. Well, I see no more questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate y'all's favorable consideration. Have a great day. Ms. Lewis, has anyone else come? So Senator Watson nor Senator Strickland have come. So that's three bills that's on hold. All right, I guess now's the time to take a look at some proposals that some of our chair, our, our rules committee members are, are, are looking at. Rules substitute for Senate Bill 95, Chairman Lumsden. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, you have in your um, Folder LC471062S, uh, this is the latest version of the bill, cleans up some things, uh, but uh, the main function of the bill is to make uh, it possible for local governments to hold hearings and conduct business during uh, declared emergencies via teleconference. It's identical to House Bill 98 that we passed out uh, before crossover. Okay, so we have a rule substitute for Senate Bill 95. It's LC 471062S. It's on your desk or in your book. Um, I have a motion. Got a move and a second. All in favor? Aye. Chairman Fleming, do you, are you have a question on this one? Okay, something else. Okay. Okay. Um, so all, uh, let's go through this again. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. It's on LC 471062S, or it passed. All right, well, since you've got your button on, I think you've got a little bill that's only 95 pages long. Uh, Senate Bill 202, LC 2803391S. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, this is a um, bill which was reported out of the Special Committee on Election Integrity yesterday. I believe it will be reported to the House this morning. Uh, and, um, and if the Chairman so desired, I guess it could be available for a supplemental calendar potentially later this afternoon. But it is a uh, bill which deals with the, several of the measures passed by the State Senate dealing with election law also deals with um, the version that the House passed and, and combines it into one piece of, legend, uh, of legislation into Senate Bill 202. And um, at the appropriate time, should we have a supplemental calendar, I'd be happy to explain more and answer questions. But I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention this morning. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we have LC 280339S. Representative Hughley has a question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to uh, Chairman Fleming, would you clarify for me this business about uh, taking over an election board when they fail to meet certain requirements? Um, and of course, I haven't had an opportunity to read all of this, but I know it's in here somewhere. So would you uh, yes, clarify that for me? Yes, ma'am. The Senate sent to the House two different versions of legislation which would allow um, for county boards of elections who are continuously having problems uh, for there to be some mechanism of intervention to, to try to correct that situation. Uh, what we did on the House side is we followed very closely an example in another area of the law that deals with a local situation that has gotten out of control and needs some help, that being the school systems. As you are aware, under Georgia law, if there is a school system, and there was one near my area that was about to lose their accreditation, 
their kids wouldn't even be able to get into uh, out of high school, their diplomas wouldn't get them into college. The governor, through a series of hearings and a due process, can actually intervene and uh, have other people run the school system until they get it back on track and then hand it back over to the, uh, the local officials. There is a method for doing that with state boards of elections in uh, Senate Bill 202, not the exact version sent to us by the Senate, but one that follows that already proven path uh, dealing with schools. Okay, well. All right, I don't, oh. Mr. Wilkerson, let me turn you on. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to the author's point, um, I know you said it might be available for a supplemental calendar, and since I know you guys put a lot of work into this, um, and it's now 94 pages. Would you be willing to hold off until Thursday so people could actually have a chance to read the bill? Well, when and when we don't move is usually up to the rules chairman, so uh, that would be within in his uh, discretion. One, one, one additional question, though, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, but I'm sure if you made a recommendation, he would honor your fine work and commitment to make sure that we all got a chance to see this bill, if, if you would at least ask. Sometimes the rules chairman uh, goes with my recommendation, but sometimes he does not. So. I can't believe you said that. Okay, I don't see any more questions. So we're going to vote on substitute to Senate Bill 202, LC 28-0339-S. Do I hear a move? Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed like sign. Okay, the opposed, raise your right hand. <laughs> it passed. All right, let's see. One down and a couple to go. All right, uh, Senate Bill 165, we have uh, an amendment proposal by Chairman Chuck Martin. What's your number? Push your button. Okay. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if the uh, members will remember, a few years ago, um, bill was passed and we uh, started collecting $200 from electric uh, vehicles because they don't pay gas tax. What this amendment seeks to do, we, we caught up in that low speed vehicles, these gym cars that, that people that uh, go 25 miles an hour or below but require a tag. They were caught up into this where they had to pay $200 for a tag. What this amendment does, specifically on lines 18 and 19, is upon registering those alternative fuel vehicles that are low speed, this would not include commercial vehicles um, and it would not include the vehicles that you see driving you know, on the roads. Uh, the, your Teslas, your, your Nissan Leaves, the, the car we had out there a few weeks ago, this would only be the, the, the gym cars, um, but it would cut their registration fee to $100. Um, the last I checked with revenue, there were about 600 of those uh, registered in Georgia, so the, the net impact would be $60,000. It's just uh, an issue of fairness for these folks. I don't think anybody meant to catch a, a, a golf cart that goes, uh, essentially a golf cart type vehicle, that goes 25 miles an hour and under uh, and treat it as a car that drives on the interstate. And Mr. Chairman, I'd ask the committee's favorable consideration to send this to the okay, floor. Okay, well, you've got a question, who's 72? Ron. Chairman Stevens. Mr. Chairman, isn't it true these are really just um, cars that use our local streets only and not our major highways where the Senate bill or House Bill 170 was intended to, to fund? Chairman Martin, just he, he's, he's said, got a yeah. yes, sir, question I was, for you. Well, he, he said chairman. I thought he was well, referring you, to you. You were chairman, chairman. So yes, go sir. ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you are correct. They, these uh, cars, by, by law, can't go on the interstate because they don't go over 25 mm -hmm. five miles an hour, so they can't. Uh, they, they're not legal out there, and this is just a uh, situation of fairness. And, in fact, I think if uh, this passes, there may be more of them. It, it could actually be a, a net revenue increase. Okay, you got one more. Yes, sir. Chairman Has uh, Jaspers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, Chairman. I know you're in discussion there, but you know, 
if this funding was part of the 170 in its original form, and I think that statue, the posture of the House, and I think General Assembly has been not to decrease funding in transportation. And um, you know, these ride on public roads that are funded through state dollars and local dollars, and even a local road gets LMIG money and other different forms and facets dollars. And, um, and I just rise, I'm just opposing this. I mean, it's typically our rule not to decrease funding as a rule in, in Georgia. Do you want Thank me to? You. you can. You may, uh, Chairman Jester, I, I understand. Um, I absolutely understand what you're saying. I, I would just say to this as, as an issue of fairness that nobody realized when that passed that these vehicles were tagged and had to pay anything. This was this was a mistake that they um, they were they fell under this uh, scenario. If if a car is out and pays two hundred dollars and, and drives fifteen thousand miles a year, you can figure that number. Most of these these vehicles maybe drive a hundred miles on the road. You're charging them fifty cents a mile. I, I understand the chairman's uh, thought on it, and, and re respect you know your vote if if you. Uh, need not to but I, I just think it's a system of fair a, in a system situation of fairness uh, I would just ask to let the members of the body um, you know have a vote on it on the floor I think it's, it's, it's just an oversight chair. by the legislature and I think it's one we have an opportunity to correct today and if I can also isn't it true chairman that most of these cars are electric and pay no gas tax therefore no real funding into um, any kind of funding that the four roads uh, they do and, and that's why the, the that's why the one hundred dollars would remain uh, again you're charging two hundred dollars for a car that drives unlimited miles on interstate highways these vehicles maybe drive 50 uh, 100 miles on, on local roads they're paying half as much so they're so they're really in fact paying 75 to 80 times per mile what, what we're charging you know, for the vehicles uh, in lines 14 and 15 that pay $200. So just, just trying to, even at $100, they would pay 30 to 40 times more than, than, than the other vehicles. So I'm just trying to find some sense of, of fairness for them um, and, and understand that the chairman's uh, wish to um, protect the transportation dollars. And, and, and again, I would offer that it, were it not so expensive to tag them, more people might own them and we might actually have a net revenue increase. I think we could we, we the the proof would be uh, you know over time, but I, re I respect the gentleman's opinion and, and don't take any of this personally. I just think that out of a system of fairness, we didn't know they existed and they were caught inadvertently, and this gives us an opportunity to uh, have them still contribute, but but do it in a, in a more fair manner. You got a couple more questions? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Martin, uh, how many of these vehicles, now we're talking about principally golf carts, correct? Or what most people would refer to as a golf cart. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. One of the, the brand names of them are, are GM, G-E-M carts, but yeah, that carry two or four people. So how many approximately are registered and paying $200 a, a year now? A couple, a couple of years ago, and this, this data is a couple of years old from revenue, it was about 600 statewide. And how many would you estimate are or out there statewide? Well, I mean, there would be 600 because you have to have no, a No, I'm talking about how many uh, unlicensed uh, similar vehicles that might be eligible for road use but are just not paying the two, uh, $200. And I'm trying to, because I shared Chairman uh, Jasper's concern about revenue, but to your point, if they're 20 times that or 100 times that, then in fact might end up being a revenue neutral position, if not a revenue increase, if we educate people and and, and, and get them to comply with the law with a lower fee. Um, yes, sir. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I do um, draw what your question was now. I think there, there are many vehicles that are not subject to get a tag that are using the roads and paying nothing, um, and, and there might be a way for revenue to bring those into the fold if the, the fee were less. But no guesstimate of how many are. I, I, I wouldn't be. Thank you. I wouldn't. Uh, have a guess to, to do that. I mean, you could ask some of the folks that are around the coast. I mean, Chairman Hogan, uh, Chairman uh, Bonner from uh, the Governor Floor Leader down Peachtree City. I know they're very um, popular in those areas. Chair Leader Taylor. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, question. Um, this is relating only to electric cars. I happen to have two that run off of fuel. And what's fair about not making them pay a different amount than what I pay? I, well, I have an electric one, too, but it's, it's different. Why would that make a difference? Well, go get, just if I'm I, if I may, may ask the lady, do, do you get tags for yours? I have not. Okay, then, then in this case, th this bill wouldn't apply to your electric one at all. You, you would be paying nothing for that. And your gas cart, you, you know, I don't know how many miles you drive that, but you would be paying, you know, per gallon. Um, Chairman Jaspers have to help me here, but let's just say it's 25 cents a gallon. So if you buy 100 gallons of gas, you'd be paying $25 in gas tax. These folks today are paying $200 eight times that. 200 times that? Well, they, were, they were paying $200 to get their tag today. Mm -hmm. if, if your carts were doing the same thing on the road and you're buying gas with them, that, that this was to replace the gas tax. So if you were paying gas and you used 100 gallons of gas in your, your vehicle and there was 25 cents gas tax per, um, per gallon, you'd be paying $25 a year. These folks are paying 200. That's my point in trying to bring it down to an, a number that's more equitable to the use of the facilities. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, Chairman Hatchett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Martin, has this issue ever been discussed in a committee other than this one? Um, I don't. It, it, the bill has been dropped on several occasions. Um, the um, former uh, member of the uh, the legislature that, that passed the bill seems to keep it from getting a hearing. Senator, I think Senator Hatchett may be in favor of it, though, if, if that was a knowledge. <laughs> well, he serves in the Senate. So that really just, just doesn't a little matter. Fam a whole fam lot. Family joke there, Chairman Hatchett. Okay, well, we've got uh, an amendment that we need to vote on for Senate Bill 165. Um, LC 393036S. Do I hear a move that this amendment be added to Senate Bill 165? Okay, excuse me. I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, AM 430198. Excuse me. I was doing 165 LC. This is um, amendment AM 430198, amendment to House or Senate Bill 165. Do I hear a move? Got a move. Do I hear a second? Got a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed like sign. No. Okay. I can't ask you to read. <laughs> Trey, you want to count? Okay, it passed. Okay. Shows, shows you how much clout the secretary has here. So. I can just tear it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we do have a, uh, a, a substitute for Senate Bill 218, uh, LC 280335S, and uh, Chairman Efstration will present the rule substitute. What, mash your button. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, uh, substitute to Senate Bill 218 includes the language as passed by the Senate, first of all. This deals with uh, Chairman Walker's bill dealing with uh, local elected officials who were under indictment and suspended from office, under indictment for a felony, that their pay will be suspended. That language remains, but the only thing that's been added is the content of House Bill 411, which is the prosecutor oversight bill. So that is uh, added into this substitute. Would ask for the committee's favorable consideration. Okay, so this bill has been, to, this substitute language has been discussed and is nothing new. That's right, it's all been vetted and uh, 411 was passed out of the House previously, Mr. Chairman, and uh, 
the Senate language that's in here was carefully vetted in the House Judiciary Committee. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, substitute, rule substitute for Senate Bill 218. I hear move. move. Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Those opposed, raise your right hand. It passed. Okay. Now, I guess the thing to do is to set the calendar for Thursday with the understanding that there may be a supplemental for today with the understanding that I hope there is because, you know, we we got a day to work today. Let's get, let's get some stuff done. And because I'd really like to go home before midnight next Wednesday, I'd really like. <laughs> now the chances of that are pretty pretty slim to none. But uh, all right, let's go. Let me be sure I don't miss any of these amendments and substitutes. And too much paper up here. All right. Senate Bill 28, I hear a move. move. Got a move and a second, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. It's on. Senate Bill 75, do I hear a move? move. Got a move and a second, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. All right. Senate Bill substitute. Uh, LC 471062S, it was approved by the committee. Um, do I hear a move? Ninety, Senate Bill 95, Rules Committee Substitute, uh, represented by Chairman Lumsden, 471062S. Do I hear a move? I move. Uh, move and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. It's on. As a sub rule substitute, 471062S. Okay. Senate Bill 165 has an amendment. Uh, the amendment has been approved. The amendment will, has to be on the uh, floor since this is a modified structure. Uh, ruling has to be on the floor for an hour before it can be voted on. So we're going to um, put uh, Senate Bill 165, do I hear a move? Got a move and a second, all in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. Along with the amendment, will be on the floor. Um, no booing over there. Um, okay. Senate Bill 193, do I hear a move? Got a move and a second, all in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. Senate Bill 218, we got a substitute, and that is LC 280335S. We have a move and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay. All opposed, raise your right hand. Okay, it passed, it's on. As a rules, as a rule substitute, um, twenty-eight zero three three five S. All right, we have a rule substitute that has been approved. Senate Bill two zero two. Its LC number is twenty-eight zero three three nine S. I hear a move. Anybody move and a second? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. All opposed, raise your right hand. It's on. 
Yes, you may. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, you identified that as a rule substitute. Is, is that not the bill that came? That is, in fact, the bill that came out of committee. It's just being adopted. There was one little error that was found. Okay. Uh, scribbler's error. Scribbler's error. Yes, sir. That's and what that's coming out as a rule substitute. Thank you very much. Okay. So Senate Bill 202 uh, is on for Thursday. Unless we decide to have a supplemental. Okay. Um, Senate Bill 234. Do I hear a move? Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed like sign. It's on. All right. Chairman Hatchett. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that pursuant to Rule 33.3, .3, debate be limited to no longer than one hour on all bills on all calendars for Thursday. Time to be allocated at the discretion of the speaker. Okay, do I hear a move? Yeah. Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Those opposed, raise your right hand. Okay, it passed. All right. That finishes the calendar for Thursday. We may have a supplemental. I'll keep you posted. Y'all have a good day. We'll let you know sometime this afternoon. Tomorrow is a committee day. You should be. I know. No, I don't. We.